Hey everyone, this is Matt Grandy with Dyco Welding out of Harrisburg, PA. What I have today for you is one of Walter's new compact, low profile magnetic base drills that is most certainly probably the industry's standard as far as, um, you know, just being compact and powerful. Um, this little guy has a 10 amp motor it has the ability to drill or turn a two inch diameter hole and it has the ability to plunge two inches thick um, the actual stroke capacity on the up and down here is two and three eighth inch so uh you know you two they make a they make a two uh a two inch long annular cutter and they make a two inch diameter annular cutter um, so that's where the two and the two come from um, some other features on this guy you can obviously see it's only it's very low compact for i-beams um, frame rails things like that from the base to the top here is only seven inches um, there are no wires exposed which you see a lot of these uh, upright mag drills have that loom of wires coming from the motor um, um, from the motor back to the power source those you know are, they can get hung up on stuff whatever so everything is compact here which is a nice feature to carry this thing around it simply has a handle it has a ratchet since we don't have a three-spoke handle like a typical mag base drill does what they offer here is just a simple a simple ratchet you know no big deal um, pretty genius put that in if you want to crank down just start here and off you go what I have found from using this is from point A here to point B over here so a half a turn 180 degrees gives you approximately one inch of movement on this cutting head so you're not there cranking back and forth the other cool thing is this is reversible so I can switch it to the back side it's the exact same setup on the back side um, so if I need to switch that handle it's as easy as putting in you know taking out your socket you push in that and flop it flop it the other side um, some other features with this guy this um, this is a variable speed on the back here there's a, a, a roll dial you can change your rpms um, you can go anywhere from 250 rpms to 500 rpms um, so on harder material typically you like to turn at a slower you know a slower speed so you have that advantage um, on some thinner gauge stuff you can crank it up and get through the hole also on the side here is an LED light bar it'll illuminate green what when you when you're typically cutting it'll turn to yellow as your load gets heavier as you bog this motor down and put a stronger uh, amp load on this motor or a heavier amp load on this motor this will turn to it's like an orangish yellow it'll say whoa you're putting too much load on the bit you're putting too much load on the on the motor um, and then eventually if you if you crank on it too far it'll turn to red if you stay in that red zone too long it'll shut this thing down so you're not gonna smoke you know you're not gonna smoke the motor or smoke your bit you know some of these bits um, you know they last a really really long time if you take care of them so a lot of guys that are using these machines out in the shop um, you can get longer life out of them if you just let them work and don't put an extreme load on them all right so that that's a key feature um, as a standard uh, well done um, <clears throat> annular cutter head up here which there's two flat spots on the cutter and they're held in I don't know if you can see this if you can help they're held in by just two set screws the Allen wrenches, there's two Allen wrenches that come right in the back there, all right? The other cool thing is on the back here, so you can see in there, there's two switches. 
All right. One, you're going to turn on, I'm sorry, you're going to turn on your magnet. Okay. The second one is your power button for the motor. Make sure my bit's not up against there. And you're off and running. And that's that, okay? Simple design, very compact. Um, total weight on this thing is right around, I think it's 21 point some odd pounds. So 21 pounds, 22 pounds at the most. So, you know, it's designed for compact spaces, but you know, guys that are using this in the shop as well, it would be a perfect fit, fit for that as well, just because of the portability of it. Um, what I'm gonna do today is, um, this bucket, I want to put some holes in it. So I have uh, one of Walter's carbide tipped annular cutters. And what those are good for are one, obviously drilling hardened material, such as like a cutting edge. Um, so I'm going to be running low RPMs on that. Um, also, what they're good for is if you're on mild steel and you cannot use lube in a, in a spot or, you know, say you're uh, somewhere... I don't know, somewhere on the job site, for whatever reason, you know, you can't use any cutting lube. You could go to a carbide cutter and, you know, have really good success with the carbide cutter and not have to, uh, not have to use any lube in that application. But on a hardened material, you know, such as a cutting edge, AR400, even AR500, um, you can drill those materials at a low RPM, so we have that right here, variable speed, and you also want to, you know, douse the head cutting head with some type of cutting fluid, some type of coolant and lubricant. So uh, you can also check out Walter's line of, of different cutting fluids. They have different options. So uh, this little guy, like I said, is a great, great compact mag base drill. The holding power on this, as far as the magnet strength, is um i think it's 2200 pounds like 2250 or 2248 something like that um so i mean and those are typically think are rated on quarter inch on up you know mag based drills do not do well in general on um thinner materials so typically they like to see at least quarter inch and then um, thicker so keep that in mind when you're drilling truck frames and things like that you can get around that sometimes by you know say you have a 3 16th inch truck frame or something thin you can typically get around that by putting a plate on the opposite side of the frame um, you know have a half inch or 3 8 inch plate or even another quarter inch piece slap it on the back side of the frame put your magnet up there or put your drill up there turn the magnet on and go from there so um, we're gonna run this. I'm gonna show you guys it drilling a couple holes in some different things. Um, and we'll go from there. If you guys are interested in this product, reach out to me. Uh, my contact information will be at the end. Dyko's contact information will be at the end. Um, we have, this is obviously our demo unit. I can come to your shop, you can demo it. You can visit our shop. We can show it to you. We can try it out for your application, get your hands on it, but I, I don't think you'll just be disappointed. This is a high-end quality product, um, you know, that uh, is honestly the industry standard. It's the, you know, the Cadillac, so to speak. So thanks for tuning in and uh, let's go to some action shots of this thing actually being used. Okay, so this is what we're gearing up to do, guys. Um, I have the mag base drill in position. And what I am after is I want to take this shackle, punch some holes in the top edge of the bucket here so I can run a strap through it, um, you know, pick things up or whatever I need to do instead of um, trying to loop it around a hook on the, on the outside corners here. But nonetheless, right now I'm on a flat top, a flat surface. If this was not a flat surface, I would want to put some type of strap around the drill. Um, there's a hole right here um that you could run a ratchet strap through and sometimes you know somehow uh strap it to whatever you're working on um, there are other options as far as magnetic base types 
This is an electro, sorry, bump the camera there. This is an electromagnet, so it requires electricity to it. Obviously, if there was a break in electricity going to it, this could fall, so you wanna strap it. There are other magnets called rare earth magnets that do not require electricity. Walter has those type of drills available, and I'm gonna show you that um, here a little later down the road on another video. Um, but for this application, I'm relatively flat, so say there was a power outage right now, it's not gonna fall. If it is gonna fall, get a strap around it. All right, I have a one inch carbide tipped annular cutter. Um, I also want you guys to take note to the LED bar here on the left side. This I'm going through 5 16th um, mild steel. Someone welded a piece of angle across the top of this bucket. The underside, the actual bucket I would say is quarter, maybe 3 16th inch. So I'm gonna go through two layers. After the first layer, I'm gonna have to stop, eject the slug, which will look something like this. I've already pre-drilled one. Eject the slug and then go to the second hole. Or go, into the, go to the second layer. Um, and that's a thinner, like I said, 3 16th inch material. The reason I want to do that is because once you go through the first one and it breaks loose, this will stay stuck up in the cutter and turn with the cutter and it won't allow you to bite into the second layer. So you just have to pause and, and do that. Um, the best way to remove them, I don't know if you guys have seen these magnet, magnet sticks. We carry those at Dyco as well. Um, they work really well for something like this as far as plucking up a, a slug out of a hole. The pin, the centering pin, I don't know if you can see it. The centering pin in this is spring-loaded. So typically, not every time, but typically that's, that punch or that centering pin ejects that slug out so you're not digging. So anyway, let's get started, enough talking. Right now, see all the glow on my hand? There's a big button on the left. I have that turned on, that's the magnet. The other button is the power button for the motor. So let's turn that on. You can see right here, we're green. If we go into the yellow, I know I'm putting too much of a load on this. I will show you that just so you guys can see it. I have the RPMs at 250 right now. Since we're on mild steel, I can crank that up. Running about 500 RPMs. Very light pressure. I'm pulling hard, I can't even. I was pulling hard to try to show you guys um, the load on that, and I, 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 I couldn't. I should have gloves on for this, so apolog I apologize there. bring that up. I'm going to turn off the magnet. I'm going to slide it back. Turn the magnet back on so it sits there. And there's your slug. We went, th oh, there's your slug. We went through there so fast that there's very little heat build up. I mean, that was really quick. So we're going to get our line back up. Second layer. I'm going to turn the RPMs all the way down. Hopefully, that'll allow me to put a load on here and show you guys what it does. 
So for whatever reason, my camera, well, not for whatever reason, my camera was full. Um, I had to delete some other videos here. But um, nonetheless, we are through the hole. I'm gonna bring this, there you heard, just heard the uh, slug eject. That's what you got there. I'm gonna turn this, well, first we're gonna bring the, bring the head up, turn off the magnet. And here the humming stops. See all the material falling out of here. Center down there. And then we got our hole. There are two layers. Nice clean hole, no cleanup, no nothing like that. And the ultimate goal is to put. shackle through it. So now I can hang my chain from the top, whatever. So I made quick work of that. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to attempt to do it. I'm going to flip this bucket up, flip it back, lift, raise it up, put the magnet or the, the, the drill on the back side, and I'm going to try to punch a hole through this hardened cutting edge. Um, some cutting edges are AR400, some of them are 500. Um, 500 it will cut, it'll cut slow. 400 will get through it no problem. So let's see what we got. Well, this is where we're at. I got her on the bottom side of the bucket. Got a strap running around the bucket in case the magnet would quit for whatever reason. Breaking power. I have a whole center punched where I want to drill. Again, this is a harder material. I do have an oiling can here. Try to get some lube on it. And I'm gonna keep, try to keep this flipped up, um, the shield up just so I can see what's going on. So. Once again, you reach around the back, the big button turns on the magnet and the small button turns on the, the juice to the motor. I'm gonna turn this down to 250 RPMs. I'm gonna keep an eye on my dial indicator here. Um, the carbide should cut this fairly easy, but since we're turning a lower RPM um, cut speed, but depth speed will be decreased just because we're not taking out as much material. So let's see what we got.
put a beautiful can you see it in there beautiful one inch hole in there through a hardened cutting edge cutting edge and there's the slug all right I'm on, that one might be warm just because we we did it at a slower slower speed yeah she's hot not crazy hot but yeah that's i mean that's like a nice clean cut there's the shavings we were getting and there's the hole can't ask for something better than that so once again walter ice cutter what made drilling through this hardened material possible? Two things, actually three, but two main things. One, having a drill that can go down to 250 RPMs, revolutions per minute. And two, Walter's carbide tip cutters. The third thing, which um, is available through Walter, through Dyco, is the Cool Cut cutting fluid. That you can add you can get it in a spray bottle whatever you, whatever you got but um definitely check these drills out and uh thanks for tuning in